Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. I'm joined, as always, by Big Show. Show, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Uh, I'm, I've am i been better, but I've been worse. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm on the mendigo Alrighty. line. We got a lot to get to today, bro. Um, uh, we have to announce our winners from the change contest. We're going to get to everybody That's who's right. anybody who loves Game of Thrones knows that we are uh, starting our recap of season eight, the final season with episode one. We're going to get to that. And we're going to start off right. with the National Football League. Uh, I right. got a couple things to go on with that. First, I want to recap on our uh, picks last week. We both bounced back in a very big way. Oh, um, good. It's a winning record. You you finished eleven and four out of the fifteen games. I wish you had followed my lead, and then you would have finished fourteen and one. Really, you only lost one game. Yeah, the, we both picked the Falcons, and they laid that egg. Wow! So every game I picked against you, you won. Yes, uh, you went with Tennessee. You went with uh, the Dolphins, and you went with the Vikings. And I thought you were going to pull out that Viking one, but uh, Detroit made that last-minute field goal. Wow. Well, this week, I'm just picking what you're picking. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Speaking of, I've got those picks right here. So, you know, I, I'm going to ask you what you want to do with them. Let's see here. My picks. Thursday night. We've got the uh, those same Minnesota uh, Vikings are at the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, I am going with the Vikings this time because I think they're going to beat the Rams. I concur. All right, so we both got the Vikings. Uh, there is Sunday at noon because I guess we're done with the overseas games for another week or two. Sunday at noon, Philadelphia is at Cincinnati. I am going to go with the Bengals. Oh, maybe. No, let me think. Ugh. Oh, this is, I'm, I'm going with the Eagles. I'm going with the Eagles. I'm also going with the Eagles. All right. Baltimore's at Cleveland. I'm going with Baltimore. Baltimore. The Titans are at the Lions. You know I'm going with the Lions. Lions. The Cardinals are at the Dolphins. I'm going with the Cards. Well, <clears throat> I'm actually going to go with the Dolphins because Tua is supposed to play. If Tua does not play, then I'm going with the Cardinals. That's <laughs> I'm going to be able to switch it like that. If Tua does not start, Cardinals is my pick. If Tua starts... Dolphins are my pick. Okay. I am going with the Jets over the Patriots. The Jets are actually going to win a game. Do I have to pick this game? I <laughs> uh, know it uh, sucks, don't it? Jets. I'm just going to stay with you. Uh, we have those Atlanta Falcons that let me down or Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lesson learned. I'm going with Tampa. They just lost two receivers for the year. Mike Evans dislocated his ankle. He's gone for the year. Oh. And good and Goodwin was in the hospital. So I don't think he's gonna play. Okay, this changes things. So I think I'm gonna go with the Falcons. I think I'm gonna follow your lead on that. So I'm gonna go with the Falcons. Um, the Green Bay Packers are at the Jaguars. It's a no-brainer, Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay. The Colts are at the Texans. I am going to go with the Texans on this one. It's a rematch of the week one matchup. Texans won that one in Indy, so I don't think they'll have a problem in Houston. Colts are pretty tough, and it's a division game, but I'm going to go with the home team, Texans. All right, uh, now we start the 3 o'clock games. The Saints are still without their car. 
and they're at the Chargers. I'm going with the Chargers. Man, do I have to pick this game? <laughs> hmm. It's a shitty game. Uh, yeah, Chargers. Uh, the Bills are at the Seahawks. This is an interesting game. I'm going to lean toward the Bills. But, I mean, barely. I am going to pick the Seahawks. Okay. And the Panthers are at the Broncos. This is Toilet Bowl 2. I'm going to go with the Broncos, though. Yeah, same. Broncos. All right. The marquee matchup, which once upon a time meant something, no longer. The Chiefs are at the Raiders, KC. Yeah, Kansas City. Now watch the Raiders win this, sons of bitches. Uh, the night game, not worthy of me giving it a look. Are you, the Cowboys are at. You missed one. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you you're right. One. You're right. Right. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm See, you see what the Chiefs Raiders game did to me. All right, the Bears at the Commanders in ends the afternoon slate, and this one's tough. This one's really tough. Is Jaden Daniel playing? Yeah, this. See, that's where, that's where I'm going to do the same thing I did with Tua. <laughs> if mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels plays, I'm going to go with the Commanders, but he's listed as day to day. I think I'm going to go with the Commanders as well. Um, if he's day to day, I, 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 I'm, I think he'll play. But it's a rib. Mm, 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 mm. Throwing it's, it's arm your torso. side. Throwing arm doesn't side matter. or non. It doesn't matter. You still have to twist your body and use your upper body to throw. Um. So I'm going to do this the same way I did the Miami game. If Jaden Daniels plays, I'm going Commanders. If he doesn't, I'm going Bears. Ditto. All right, now we go to that 7 p.m. shit. The Cowboys at the Niners. I'm going with the Niners. They couldn't possibly be as bad as they were last week, and Dallas is not anywhere near that good. Yeah, and, and the Cowboys' run defense couldn't stop a cold, so... Yeah, Niners. Niners will get a get-right game this week. Yeah, and I believe Christian McCaffrey's supposed to be back. I think he's going to be back after their bye. After the bye? Okay. Never mind then. But I'm, yeah, I'm still going with the 49ers. Uh, Monday night, those sneaky Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, just so you know, Devontae Adams just got traded to the Giants. So, no, nah, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> They could lose to the Steelers three weeks in a row. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm going to go with Steelers because there's no way the Giants are going to beat the Steelers at home. Yeah, and Russell Wilson is – he looked really good the other night. Yes. I mean, did. and that was that was against the Jets, but still, uh, I will also go with the Steelers. Okay. All right, so we're going we're gonna to see next week how we did on those picks. We had a bounce back week this week, so hopefully that will, you know, continue. What's the overall record? Oh, wow. You always ask me that when I don't have that paper with me. That's in another room. Gotcha. I will get that for us next week since next week's the halfway point of the uh, NFL season. We do need that. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> real quick. And then starting, starting after that, next Tuesday, we're going to repick these games so we know who won, and we're just going to keep the positive energy going. Hey, there you go. <laughs> um. Just just piggybacking on one more football thing. Y you already know this. Our good friend Kevin already knows this. Uh, I have denounced my fandom for the remainder of the year. I mean, you know, when I told you last year that um, McDaniel screwed us so hard, we're going to be we're going to suck for a couple years. I didn't really believe it myself, but it, it has come upon us. Um. I can't in good conscience watch a Raider game. I love my squad, but I need to take a break from them. I think you need to quit come, uh, quit blaming the old coach and start blaming the new coach. I, I can't disagree with you right now. I, I cannot. But you just but you just said 
that McDaniels was going to cause the team to be bad for a couple of years. And you were right. That's what you just said. Yeah. And I mean, not bad this year. No, that had nothing to do with McDaniels this year. Okay. Let me tell you how it did have something to do with McDaniels. Had they kept Carr, do you think they would be as bad as they are? Carr was gone last year, the year before last. He he, he was but, gone but, last year. He didn't, he didn't but, play for the y'all last year, so that's but a who was, who was the coach? Who was the coach? McDaniels. McDaniels. That was last year that he were with y'all. Why didn't y'all go out and get a quarterback this year? Okay, I blame that on the new coach. I mean, that's like y'all. Tell, plenty, that's like some. Here's the thing. It's plenty on. of blame it's to like, go around. It's plenty it's, of blame it's, to go it's around. Like, it's like the Chiefs, fan, the negative Chiefs fan, or the people that don't like the Chiefs fans, Shooting text saying, I can't believe that the refs made Brock Purdy throw three interceptions last week. Nah, I nah, mean, yeah, you, you I, got I you got to blame who's blame. You know, they had plenty of opportunities. They had a good draft pick and all that. I mean, stop blaming McDaniel's. Blame who's in office. Blame who has their hand on the controls. In that case, top down from the top down, it starts with Mark Davis. I agree. But yeah, AP gets some plenty of blame too. He does. Oh yeah, he'll be gone by the end of the year, so we'll see. Unless, hey, maybe y'all, maybe with Brady owning half, or, you know, ten percent of your squad, maybe Belichick comes in and starts coaching your team. No, we do not want that. We do not want that. Trust me, we do not. It's not going to happen. So don't you want to. So you you don't want a winner. Gotcha. No, I don't want a cheater. I don't. I don't. One, it's bad enough that Brady is in the front office now. I, I don't need Belichick in there either. He's not in the front office. He's collecting a royalty check. He ain't got shit to do with what y'all do on the field. I know, but you know, he's like those Packer fans that bought stock in 20, uh, 2021. They they run around yeah. and say, I own the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, you bought a share of stock in the Green Bay Packers, but you, but you know, you're not going to be at a know. board meeting. You know that that whole team is owned by the city of Green Bay. There's not like an owner, right? Right. Like the peas and the do season tickets, they have ownership in that in that in that what you call it in that team. Yeah. So those guys saying that I own the team, they are right. Now, granted, they're not making any moves. They don't, yeah, they they don't, and they don't get any profit off of it either. But real tr true that Brady, I, he's collecting a royalty check. I, in a way, I wish the Davis family would do something like that. Just. Give it to the city of Las Vegas. Be done with it. Um, get a managing partner or something. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, Davis has admitted that he doesn't know as much as his dad did about football, and he wants to turn it over to other people, but he doesn't want to let go of the ownership. So let Belichick be your general manager then. Oh, I thought you were talking coach. I was, but I mean, you said you didn't want him on your squad regardless. Why wouldn't you want a proven winner? The dude know. has six Super Bowls as a head coach and another two or three as a coordinator. I guess what you're saying is right. It's just that the whole McDaniels thing left a bad taste in my mouth. McDaniels isn't Belichick. That's for sure. McDaniels is an offensive mind. Belichick is a defensive mind. He set two AFC West franchises back. This is true. Uh, but in my I, personal opinion. And I know one is not the other. Mm -hmm. No, true. Is that if Belichick came in and, dis and were to be your head coach, because it is the Raiders, and if and if – uh, Davis actually opens up the checkbook. I think you guys would get good fast because players want to wear the silver and black. They want to. Oh, yeah, it's, I agree. It's like it's iconic, and to have Belichick as a head coach after being removed for a year, you know, I could see him being burned out in the Patriots uniform because he's been there for 157 years. But you know, a new place, a new start. I mean, go back to when he. When he almost made the Browns legit. That is you so know what true. I mean? Before they moved to Baltimore. I mean, they came out of the cellar that year. So, yeah. um, and beat the Patriots in the playoffs, which is why Kraft wanted Belichick to play for him 
or be his coach. Yeah. Or we'll give you Matt Nagy. I, I, Matt Nagy is kind of like the Eric Bieniemy thing. Um, yeah. Or hey, Bieniemy's there. There you go. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm, I don't mean that in a positive way. I mean, now you're talking. Andy's calling the shots. I know. I oh, I definitely know that. <laughs> Except for defense. Hey, we'll take spags too. Although I don't really have a problem with no. our defense. I have a problem with our offense. I um, have a problem with your entire team. Well, I have a problem with losing, but it, it they suck. We're running a scheme that those players are incapable of running. And it's this, like this the offensive coordinator doesn't make adjustments. Hey, run it up the middle into the pile. Run it up the middle into the pile. Then drop back to throw. Stand there, check your reads. Oh, get sacked or throw a pick. It's not creative. It's but not that's creative. because it has nothing to do with creativeness. Your quarterbacks are trash. Every quarterback on your roster is a backup. Yeah, I agree. So you can't expect them to give you great things. And if your offensive line blows, there's no way that the, they're going to be able to execute the offense. Oh, yeah. I mean, you but can put, we'll, but we'll you can see put Tom week. back there, and Tom will get killed but back there. We'll see this week because AP said he's he's got the recipe to beat Patrick Mahomes. So I guess we'll see. Hopefully he'll back it up for you guys. Well, part of that recipe, I'm not even going to lie, was catching him off guard. You're not gonna do that this this year. Um, oh no! It it it, it kind of it fell apart in training camp. And if you think Patrick Mahomes forgot about the Kermit puppet in training camp, I'm just about to bring that up. Wrong. Oh yeah. Now I think that we will play them tougher than most teams have played them, but still gonna fall apart at the end and get blown out. So Def define tougher. Um, I think the first half is gonna be close. But I think starting with that third quarter, once the Chiefs get the ball, whether they get it at the beginning of the third or if they're the second team with it, they're just going to – they they've got the number. They are just going to start moving the ball at will. And, and Gotcha. I can't see any scenario where no matter who your receivers are, Patrick Mahomes is going to be clicking. If, if the receivers are covered, that means there's an open lane. And you think he's not going to take it? And then yeah, Kelsey, he will. Kelsey's been too quiet too long. I'm it's more worried about. Out. I'm more worried about our left tackle. If if our left tackle can hold up, the you know, six times out of ten against uh, Crosby, then I think we'll be all right. But if they have to keep a running back in to help chip on him or a tight end to chip on him, it's going to be difficult that's true all right my brother let's talk about winterfell and all right winterfell do we want to do the do we want to do the giveaway or we're doing that last yeah let's go ahead and do the giveaway you're right because they deserve it um for those of you guys that don't know just a quick recap of that our facebook fitness group change had a contest from september 15th to october 15th you had to be active at least five days out of the week and uh, display such activity on the forum, you know, any way you wanted to. Um, we got two standouts that did that. Amy Miller and George Griswell. And um, both of them did everything that they needed to do Basically, it came down to a draw on first place and second place. So, for first place, congratulations. Drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. Amy. Second place, Grizz, that's you. So, George and Amy, once again, good job. Keep it up. Uh, you know, I know it was a contest, but don't. Don't stop being fit just because the contest is over. You you did remarkable jobs, both of you. Uh, very proud yes. of you guys. Good Set job. Set a good example. Set a good example. So I'm going to be contacting both of you so I can, you know, get said prize to you. 
And um, again, wonderful job. Keep up the good work. The rest of you guys need to get in the forum and start putting in that work. Don't wait on the contest because I've seen a lot of people start and they couldn't commit. And that's not the right way to go about it. Because if you go in on fire, that, that fire is going to go out real quick. I'll tell you what was so difficult for me to stay involved. Even though I said at the beginning I wasn't going to do it, mm -hmm. was I, I get up in the morning and I work out. Mm -hmm. I work out for almost two hours. So having to go back out there and do it again or do something else, I was like, no, I've already done my workout. I've already done two hours. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing more. So... That's that's kind of why I bowed out gracefully. But no, you know what though? You're still putting in the work. I know, but the contest was work out twice a day. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I get that. But technically, you and I weren't eligible anyway. So. True that, true that. Well, you tried to tell me I was, but I took myself out. But, yeah. You know, I, I was going to do it as an example to keep, you know, like you were doing. But then I was like, Psh. Man, I get up at 5.30, I'm out by 6.00, I'm home at 8.00. I'm not going back out there again. I'm, I'm not. I, I feel you. I mean, I'm, I'm trying personally in the month of October just, just to run every day, minimum of two miles. Bro, uh, it's, it's, it's starting to wear on me. But I'm saying to myself, uh, there's eight or nine days left in this month. I can do it. I can do it. Yep. Come November, I'm going to start adding weight training. So I will be working working out twice a day hey there you go all right now kids we're going to talk about winterfell yeah, yeah winterfell season or season eight episode numero yep. uno. episode one you're right um so all right so this was the last season and uh, let me see didn't yeah gentry got the hammer back and uh, I'm trying to remember what happened in what. Well, order. the begin the beginning in Winterfell is 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 Daenerys and Jon Snow and the whole Dothraki army and all that coming into Winterfell. Yeah, that's, they, they that's arrived there. The whole first part of the season. And what I really enjoyed about that was the homage that they paid that they play that uh, paid. paid, paid, paid to season one, episode one, when Robert Baratheon and his group was coming in, Aya was there in the crowd watching the royal whatever come through, procession come through the city. Mm -hmm. She was there now again as the Targaryen royal procession rolled through with her half-brother. And then that's when she seen Gendry and, you know, and she seen the hound that was with him and, and all of that. So... I, I enjoy, I kind of liked how they did that to kind of tie it back to the first, the first season. Yeah. And it was the first time since season one that all of the remaining Starks were back together. In the same area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because John <laughs> hadn't seen Bran since Bran was in a coma. Yes. Yeah, since season one. Yeah. Yeah. So now he was, they were in the same area at Craster's Keep, but um, the one dude and the frog lady and the frog boy and Hoder, they took off before they could tell, they could tell that John, that his brother was there, but then Hoder killed that guy. Remember, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bran took over his body and killed him because he was trying to kill them or whatever. Or right. he was going to ransom Bran, actually. Yeah, dang. I forgot about that. You're right. Yeah, so, you know, happy family reunion, all that good stuff. Um, it, it was fun. I'm trying to remember. Um, you want me to lead it? Yeah, go, go for it. Help me okay. out. Okay. So you had that par portion there, and then they moved to uh, King's Landing. And you see Cersei talking to, uh, I think it's M Maester Ky Kyburn, the, the one that um, basically made the mountain a zombie. Yes. Uh, and basically, you know, 
that's when she basically told him that we're not sending the because uh, he told her, hey, the, the the wall has fallen. The Night King in the army has made it into Westeros, you know, made it in there. And she was like, good. You know, I'm not sending my army there to help like, you know, everybody was expecting. And then you see the ships of the um, the Iron, Iron Man. U- 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 I forget his name, but he had the golden army with them from Pentos who is the most fiercest army in that area, but they're only paid for by gold. So she now has two major armies. She has the Iron Fleet, and she has the Golden Army, and she has the Lannister Army to go against Daenerys' uh, Dothraki and Unsullied, plus everybody that is in the north or who oppose her in in uh, 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 King's Landing. So there was that. And then you move on to kind of back to Winterfell and you hear um what's the eunuch's name? Very Varys. Varys. Uh, yeah, you, you probably pronounce and, it better than me. And uh Tyrion and the Onion Knight were talking about wouldn't it be great if we could get Daenerys and Jon Snow to marry? So they could rule the seven kingdoms together and they would be a good match that could keep the realm in peace for years. Is And then that in line, Tyrion says, but the problem is, is that nothing stays the same. And then you see, you know, it just a lot of different stuff where um, Aya goes down to see Gendry, ask him to make her a, sword, a special yeah. weapon a special so, weapon yeah I, and uh you know he's hitting on her she's hitting on him back i could have did without that but i i understand they kind of had puppy love for each other when they were on the road yeah and, i think uh, the writers were trying to imply that they've grown into a full man and woman in the time that they've been apart yada 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 yeah but for they, the they, most part they drew it out a bit too much they were still too young uh Let's see what else happened. Oh, um, the Targaryen Daenerys went in there and told Samwell that you know she basically killed his dad and his brother, um, which which uh, upsets him. He runs down, um, runs into Bran, and Bran says it's time we tell John. And uh, yeah, he says you know well. You should tell him. He's like, no, he's not going to understand. He's not going to listen to me. He'll listen to you, Sam. You need to tell him. And so basically, Sam's go, Sam goes to John and says, hey, you know, did you know that Daenerys killed my parent or my, my brother and my dad? And he was like, no. And he was like, would you? And he was like, I don't know. I've killed treasoners before. He goes, yes, but you've also let them live. And he says, right, but I'm not a king. He goes, you've always been a king and basically drops the bomb. If you haven't read the book that this is Aegon the sixth Targaryen true blood of the Stark girl, which was Ned's sister and Rhaegar Targaryen, who was the king that Robert Baratheon overthrew during Robert's rebellion. So technically he is the nephew of Daenerys. Boom. They've been boinking each other already. Yeah, that's got to be disheartening. But the Targaryens were known to sleep with family members, so it's not that big a deal in the bloodline. However, um, you know, Jon Snow was raised in the North, so he has a different set of values and 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 things of that nature. Very. True. Uh, but you know, Jon Snow gets to ride the, his first time riding the dragon um, with Daenerys. They get to do that. And then it basically ends uh, with uh, Jamie Lannister coming into Winterfell and Bran sees him. And then it pretty much goes dark from there. Oh, let yeah. me let me go back too, because when uh-huh. uh, back in Lannister, the 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 ah, what the hell is his name? The dude that's running the Iron Fleet, that guy, he basically tricked Cersei into sleeping with him uh, in that in that episode basically made her feel bad because 
she promised him, you know, you can have me once the war is over. And he basically said, you know, but the war could take years. And she says, well, if you want a whore, buy one. If you want a queen, earn one. He goes, but haven't I earned it already? And basically explained to her what he did. And so she felt obligated to, to give him what he needed. And she did. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I call that crafty thinking on his part, but. Um... Oh yeah. And then the very ending part is you see the Dondarian dude. And uh, the rest of the Night's Watch, and then you see uh, Giant's Bane are in a castle, and the White Walkers have already went through there. And you, they see the head, the boy that was that was at the beginning of That's the episode, right. yeah, um, that was sent back by Sansa to get to bring all of her people to Winterfell. Um, he was basically impaled on the wall with a bunch of ripped up body parts in that uh, symbol that you see throughout the series. And, uh, and that was, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of, you knew, you know, that the shits it's, they, they're there now, you know, shit's about to get real. Yeah. Yeah. It, so it for was. the most part, I think the episode set the season up fairly decent. It did. It did. Um, it, it gave us what at that time we were already used to. And as I mentioned uh, last week, it was either last week or the week before. The only letdown for me was, you know, the weight. You know, the, and, and you don't find this as much with network shows, but to a greater degree, any cable or streaming service show, you find it often a lot. You'll get a season, boom, a season, boom. And then you get over a year wait between seasons. And it's kind of off-putting because well, so much I happens mean, yes. in life that you lose a little bit and that you lose interest or or something comes up or I would say yes and no, because you watched when you knew it was yeah. coming, you you were there. Yeah. So you know, and I mean, who is the best at making his audience wait? George Lucas. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, they're just take, they're just, you know, he invented the wheel and they're not reinventing it. That's true. I, 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 and you're right. Once, once the wait was over, we did get a good episode. It set the tone for what could have been a great season. It was a good no, season. I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to say the I'm, season wasn't great, and we'll get to it. But yeah, I we'll think, get to it. I think that it definitely could have been better. Yeah. But, you know, as we're only on episode one. Yeah, so we're on episode good. one, so we're just going to stick to episode one. And I, I will say this. There were more good than bad, so, you know, oh, and, yeah. and we'll Most get to definitely. that. Most definitely. I want to know what you guys think about episode one of uh season eight of game of thrones winterfell were you happy when it finally came back how did you feel about it and um what was your favorite part of the episode please uh leave us a, a message on the uh, platform you're on or you could just email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com as well if you're watching this on youtube you know you can hit us up in the comments uh next week we're talking episode two of season eight. So yep. yeah, we got go ahead. I wanna I wanna I just want to add a couple tidbits that you know from like the book. Oh okay. and things like like that. And also you haven't watched Dance of the Dragons, any of that, have you? I have not. I have not. So obviously this season happened way before anybody knew that we were gonna see dance. Mm -hmm. Of the dragons, right? So things that I, as I rewatch this episode, I'm like, man, that was really clever on how they did the new series or the new, you know, the mm. dance of the dragons. Like that's really clever how they kind of tied that in without tying it in, type of thing. You know, I've already talked about the the blade that Aya holds. That's 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 in the original, but the way that the dragons selected Jon Snow. To allow him to ride. That I thought was perfect. Because that's kind of how it happens in uh, 
in the show Dance of the Dragons. If the dragon doesn't want to bond with you, he's going to kill you. That's just, he's going to light your ass on fire. That's just what he does. I'm, I'm glad and, you mentioned or, that dragon because that same dragon and John come into play later on. I can't talk about it now, but we yeah, need to. That, that she does. And um, so I, 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 I like that. And, and kind of just flipping to a different point of view. And I'm not all the way through the fourth book yet. But from what I understand, the mountain is actually dead in the book. Like, he doesn't get reanimated. Hmm. And now maybe I'm just not at that part in the book yet. But they've stated multiple times that he died on the table while Kyburn was working on with him. Now maybe that's just a tongue in cheek because the mountain died, but what's left is this monster guy, possibly. Um but what I really dislike about the fourth book is the third book ended when Tyrion 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 killed his dad. That's that's basically where the book ended that that storyline. I am almost I would say a little over halfway through the fourth book and there has been no chapter about Tyrion. Like you just don't, they're, they're like laying pieces to all these other people that come into the plot, you know, that we meet during the show. So in my mind, I know who they are, but like, if you've never seen this show, you'd be like, damn, the fourth book really turned to turn right from where the first three went. Cause there's a lot of new pieces to the puzzle. And then I don't know if I told you this as well, but the in, the epilogue in season or in book three, uh, Cat Catelyn Stark is not dead in the books. She I think you did tell was, me that she was resurrected like Jon Snow was uh, with the Lady in the Red. Mm -hmm. She was she was resurrected by that Don Darian dude that has the flaming sword. That was dealing with the hound in the show. You know what I'm talking about? The yeah. guy with the patch. Yeah. Uh, and she is called. They don't call her cat. They call her. Stoneheart. I think. Because hmm. she, she can't talk. Because her throat. Was cut so deep. That her larynx was, was destroyed. So she can't speak. Um. But I thought that was kind of a cool little twist that they did not that the, I wish they would have done in the show that they did not do. That that would have been um, different. But yeah, so that's you know any tidbits that I see that are obviously completely different from the book than the show. I want to bring those out so you kind of get an idea. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to be hitting uh, episode two next week. For right now, I want you guys to stay positive, stay blessed. Take us on out of here. All right, you guys. Yep. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Episode two. Hopefully I'll have a better week of picks than, than my buddy Rick. He's been blowing me out every week. Barely. Uh, but yeah, we will uh, see you next week. Love your loved ones. Tomorrow's not promise. Take care.